So hello there and welcome to another tutorial. My name is Tamne Bakshi and today let's have some fun. You know, recently I was taking a look into the game of Sudoku and it's something that I've never really played before. I've known of the game, but I've never really played it. Um, and so I was taking a look at the game and you know, me being a technologist, the first thing that comes to my mind whenever I see any kind of game really, uh, is how can I automate this? How can I build a computer program to play it for me? Um, kind of weird that that's the first thing that comes into my mind, but anyway, that's what I find most fun. Um, and so what I wanted to do was essentially bring that same logic to Sudoku. I wanted to build my own bot that could play the game for me, because of course, the only thing more fun than playing a game is building the bot that does it for you. Uh, now, as I was doing this, I had a couple of different ideas of, of how exactly I could build a bot like this. I took a look at some online resources that also did similar things. This was back a couple months ago. Um, and so while I don't remember the exact details of exactly how other people implemented their bots, I thought, you know what, that's for the better. Uh, let's see if I can try and implement uh, a bot from scratch today uh, based off of nothing but what I already know from what I've seen on the internet. Um, really quickly, uh, I want to do go over, um, I, I do want to go over some of the sort of basic logic of Sudoku first um, and sort of what my idea is and then we'll get to actually implementing. Uh, before we start though, I do want to say that if you enjoy this kind of content, you want to see more of it, please do make sure to subscribe to the channel as it really does help out a lot. And of course, please do make sure to turn on notifications so you know when I release new videos and like the video if you did enjoy. Of course, if you have any questions or suggestions, feel free to leave it down in the comments section below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Now digging a little bit deeper into the world of Sudoku, as you can see uh, right over here, I've got myself a pretty simple game of Sudoku written out on this piece of paper here. Uh, essentially the idea is this, you have got a 9x9 nine nine grid uh, and within this 9x9 nine nine grid, uh, each, uh, each individual tile has a value. Uh, this value would be um, either one of the numbers from 1 through 9. Uh, effectively, each tile needs to have a number that is unique to its row, column, and 3x3 three three section that it's in. There are 9 total 3x3 three three sections. Over here, top left, here, 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 and so on and so forth. These are all 3x3 three three sections that need to have unique numbers. Uh, now, of course, it is pretty obvious through this explanation um, that the numbers need to be, you know, one through nine. Uh, again, because there's only nine, um, there's only nine either in the row or the column or the individual three by three grid, and each um, each sort of row, column, and 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 subsection needs to contain. Uh, all of the numbers one through nine. And so based off of all of those rules and given an incomplete board like this one, you have to somehow predict what these numbers would be. Now as a human, your strategy can, can really vary, right? There's, there's lots of experts that I've seen with like really tremendous strategies and you can just see them sort of speed run these things and it's really fun. Um, but of course, I'm not a human expert at Sudoku and this in particular was taken from online as one of the harder puzzles to solve, um, at least for a beginner like myself. Um, and so I thought, why not go ahead and build a bot to play this for me? In particular, I wanted to use what's known as the recursive backtracking algorithm. Uh, so effectively what you would do is you start off in the top left and you sort of scan through the board one tile at a time. And what you're going to do is, let's just say you start off here since this one's already filled. Uh, when you start here, you're going to be like, okay, what are the valid numbers for me to put here, right? Which one, what would be my legal moves? So I know that I cannot have a six, five, or seven. I know I cannot have a four, one, two, or once again, six. So instead of maybe thinking about what we can't have, let's think about what we can have. Can we have the number one? No, we cannot. Uh, can we have the number two? No, we cannot. Can we have the number three? Well, yes, we can because it's not within this three by three grid or its row or its column. Uh, so let's just call this uh, A. And if I were to make a note for A over here, uh, then we can say that, hey, uh, for, for, for this tile A, uh, we are allowed to have the number three. What about uh, four? That's not allowed. Um, five isn't allowed, six isn't allowed, seven isn't allowed, but nine, uh, eight and nine are allowed. Uh, so I can go ahead and note those down. So three, eight, and nine are allowed. 
Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create three separate copies of this board because if you see there are three total legal moves that I can make. I'm going to make three copies of this board. In each one of those copies I'll assign a different value to A. So I'll create one where A is equal to three, one where it's equal to eight, and one where it's equal to nine. Then I'm going to call the same function that we, that we used to create this uh, once again. So it'll be recursive um, on each of these boards. Uh, now what's going to happen is we're going to start doing the same thing for B, right? So we're going to see the same thing for B uh, when A is equal to 3, 8, and 9. Uh, and here's the interesting part. Right as we go through, so we do A, B, then C, then D, right as we reach a node where we realize, oh wait, there's no more legal moves for me to make, that means one of the moves that we made before it made it so that there's no longer a legal move for this one. So one of these moves needs to change. So when we reach that base case in the recursive function, we'll sort of recurse back through the call stack and we'll be like, all right, let's move on to the next child of C. If we've exhausted all the children of C, then we go back to B. If we've exhausted all of its children, then we go back to A and then we go to A's next child. So if this entire sort of recursive call stack was based on A equals three, then we do A equals eight and retry everything else from there. Uh, of course, everything will need to be recalculated because now A's value has changed. Uh, and so in theory, using this technique, I should be able to automatically figure out what all these values need to be. And of course, I'm very excited by that opportunity. And so let's go ahead and see if I can implement this Sudoku bot from scratch and I'll explain how the code works as I go along implementing it. All right, so I've gotten some code ready and basically what it does uh, is it allows me to initialize a new Sudoku board uh, and it can calculate the children the way that I told you. So essentially finding where the first sort of empty slot is uh, and then figuring out which numbers would be valid there. Uh, one, mis one sort of change that I will make is make this an optional variable and in this case return nil so that we can tell the difference between there being no children and the game having been won. Uh, if it's nil, meaning there are no more empty slots and we won the game, that's great. Um, but if there's no more children and this is just empty because nothing from this loop actually gave us any children, then we know that we've lost the game, like there's no way we can continue. Um, so, so that's, I think, an important addition. Uh, now one thing that I will do is optional chain here and let's verify that this actually finds the children that I expect. Uh, so the way that I'm going to do that is I'm going to assume that we do get children. So I've tested that out. We do get children, but I don't know what their boards are like. Um, so for each one, let's go ahead and do like a little for each here. Um, and for each one, I'll take the board. Uh, for each board, uh, I will do a 4i in 0 through less than 9, and we'll call this one y. For x in the same thing, uh, I will take board xy, and I will print it with the terminator, or what, what's that called in Swift? Um, let's find the... Uh, oh, it is called terminator. Perfect. So terminator uh, being just a space, I guess. Uh, or rather a pipe actually. Um, and then what I will do is between each row, I'll go ahead and print out um, how many dashes uh, it would be. So nine for the actual characters, then eight for the separators. Um, so yeah, just, just uh, 17 uh, dashes. And I think the easiest way to do that would be to do this uh, like so. And then between each one, we'll just print like a little gap. So let's go ahead and see if it comes back with the right boards. Okay, that's definitely not how we wanted it. Um, maybe then I can just do uh, this and we should be good to go. All right. Um, so now let's see here. So over here, as we can see, this is the empty slot. The, the one beside top, the top left uh, is the empty slot that we're trying to fill in, which is right here. And the children that we predicted were three, eight, and nine. And as you can see, this code is filling in three and eight and nine. Hooray, this code actually works. All right, so now we should be able to actually implement the recursive backtracking logic. And if I'm correct, after that, we should have Self-playing Sudoku. Let's see. 
Okay, so I've gone ahead and attempted to implement a solving function. In theory, I, I mean, I think this should work. I haven't actually tested it yet, so I'm not sure, but let's see. Um, so effectively, the way that this works is, you know, it's a solve function. Uh, it checks if we do have children. Um, if we return nil from this function, that means we've won the game because there is no more empty slots. There, there are no more empty slots. So we just return self because we know self is the solution. But if we did attempt to calculate children, but we weren't able to find any, meaning this array is empty, then we return nil. So there is no solution from this specific, you know, branch of the recursive call that we're going through. Uh, then we loop through all the children that we that we have for this node, and for each one we attempt to do that recursive solution call. Um, if we do find a solution from that recursive call, then we return it. Otherwise, if no children uh, return a solution, then we return nil. So let's see if it works. Uh, so in theory, I should just be able to do um, board.solve, and let's just see if this even gives me a result before we attempt to print it. Um, okay, index out of range, that's not good. Let's see what's wrong with this. Um, so here we're attempting to access x at uh, the value 9, which is obviously not correct. Um, and let's see why this is the case. Okay, yeah, that makes sense because if we're in a three by three and if we try and access, like the, if, if, if let's just say the very, we're trying to check uh, if a number is valid um, in the very last sort of uh, column of a row, then it's gonna try and go three ahead. So my current, my is valid logic currently is not correct. Um, I feel like the way I could solve that is by modding three um, in point dot x and point dot y. So I could just do mod three um, and that could solve that logic by um, automatically figuring that out. Uh, as a matter of fact, I actually might need to do a mod three times three. Um, yeah, I think that would work. Okay, so mod three times three um, should give me the beginning top left index of each three by three. Um, Let's see if this runs. Okay, so we get nil. I wonder why. Um, so I guess it's time to do some debugging. Uh, the first thing I'm going to check is if the isValid function is even working in the first place. Um, so the way I would do that uh, is by putting a breakpoint over here so that we know when we're sort of entering into that, uh, in, in, into that area. Um, and then let's see over here. When we do a get, we would probably want to print out the indices of that get then. So let's just actually print out um, x and y. Uh, and let's over here print out, um, well, we're, we're already getting the x and y. So let's go ahead and check that out. Okay, so we're gonna run this uh, and we hit a break point here. So we're about to start querying the board for x and y values. Uh, the point that we're looking at is one zero. So theoretically our mod three times three logic should give us zero zero, uh, which if I were to run, um, let's see, that doesn't seem to be what we queried. So one mod three, uh, oh, of course that is one. Uh, maybe we need to do divided by three. Yeah, I think it might be divided by three, not mod three. Uh, let's check to see if that's correct. Okay, so now it gives us 0, 0, 0, 1, and 0, 2, which is correct. Um, and then it should give us 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 2, and then 2, 0. Okay, let's see if this works now. Um, we're going to continue running. Uh, it's printing out a lot of stuff, which is adding a lot of latency, so I'm going to remove the print. Um, and fingers... I think we might have done it. Let's see. Uh, I will, uh, that, that, that's easier than I expected, I'll say that. Um, so let's see. Uh, let's go ahead and wrap this in a call if let solution equals board.solve. Um, and then if we do find a solution, uh, then I'll go ahead, copy in this code that I have over here. Um, and then I'll just go ahead and replace board with solution here. Okay, let's see what it gives us. So I'm gonna go ahead and run this. This is the filled out Sudoku board that it gives me. Uh, let's see if this is actually valid. So I'm gonna go over to Web Sudoku, which is where I'm gonna run the test. So it gives me nine, two, and then one, three, four, eight. So let's try and fill these out. Um, 
9-2-1-3-4-8. How am I doing so far? Everything's okay? All right. Uh, 8, 4, 5, 6. So 8, 4, 5, 6. Uh, and then the 9's already there. 3, 2, 1, 7. Or let's see here. Three two three two seven one. Okay, so that was just me misreading it. Um, and then the next row is three seven one two three seven one two, uh, and then eight four six nine eight four six nine, and then five. How am I doing so far? Everything's okay. Let's see five one four three six seven, and then eight two nine. I'm going to go ahead and speed up the process here for you. Okay, moment of truth. I've gone ahead and filled out the whole board. Let's see if it worked. There we go. I solved the Sudoku puzzle. That is really interesting. That is easier than I expected it would be, going to be honest. Uh, you know, I looked at the game and I was like, you know, maybe, maybe this would take a little bit of time to solve, but apparently that was easier than I expected. And this is the first time I'm doing this um, ever. Um, you know, I, I've seen a little bit of documentation online some time ago around like recursive backtracking, but first time I'm actually implementing it. Um, not too bad. Let's go ahead and get some like harder Sudoku puzzles and, and, and see if, uh, and, and just see what the performance of the bot is like. Um, so let's just, uh, let's just go ahead and find something hard. Okay, so I found a Quora question uh, asking what's the hardest Sudoku puzzle ever created, um, and looks like this is it. So I'm gonna go ahead and feed this into the program. Let's see what we get this time. All right, so I've gone ahead and uh, transcribed the board into my code. I believe this is correct. Let's see if the code can find a solution. Looks like it has. <laughs> All right, uh, now let's go ahead and uh, maybe check if the solution is correct. All right, so I found this online Sudoku checker. Let's see if I can feed in the output of my program and see if it thinks it's correct. All right, it looks like the Sudoku checker says it found one solution, which makes sense because I've filled out the entire board, which means that this in itself is a solution. That is incredible. You know, I thought it would be a little bit harder to build a Sudoku bot, but apparently that's all it takes. Um, and so hopefully this was helpful to you to see a little bit of sort of what goes behind the scenes when I have an idea of, of to, to sort of implement something. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put this code down in the description below for you to go ahead and check out. Uh, feel free to use it. Uh, maybe a little challenge for you. Can you repurpose this code to go ahead and generate new Sudoku puzzles? Let me know in the comments if you're able to figure it out. Well, thank you very much everyone for joining today. Hopefully this was helpful to you. Uh, and of course, again, any more questions, suggestions, feel free to leave it down in the comment section below. And of course, if you enjoy this kind of content and you want to see more of it, please do make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and turn on notifications so you know when I release videos just like this one today. And thank you very much for joining me today. Goodbye.